Hi, everyone. How are you all doing? Awesome. I appreciate you being here this early on a Monday morning. Feel free to chime in. You know, I want this to be interactive and more conversational, more fun, relaxed. Um, and that helps me out as well. And hopefully it makes it more interesting for all of you. So let's dive straight in. Oh, quick introductions about me. So I started out as a DJ many, many years ago. I grew up in Australia. I now live in California. Been living in San Diego eight years. Uh, yeah, California, San Diego. Hell yeah, we're gonna hang out, all right. I mean, I wanna hang out with all of you, but locals, I love it. Um, so I went from DJing into music production. I started hosting a few radio shows. I started doing podcasts, kind of dabbled in as many things as I can in the world of music. Uh, from that and going independent, that led me to being the person that I am today, where I get to come out, share all of the things that I learned, talk about a lot of the mistakes that I've made, hopefully save you some pain. Um, and I just get to geek out on a lot of really cool stuff. Like I genuinely get excited by this, which um, doesn't feel weird to me at all. So um, I love sharing. And disclaimer, uh, I actually just had to update this. So uh, Friday was my last day in my day job. I was actually part of the layoffs that are sort of sweeping the music industry. So it's kind of dangerous. I have two hours, I have a microphone, and I can say whatever I want. <laughs> so, that being said, um, I think it's going to be pretty safe anyway. But um, the disclaimer still applies. Like, I am making comments. I, I do have my own jokes and my own material. Trust me, I write it myself. Uh, the advice is general advice. Things can change, and I'm not speaking on any former employer or future employer for that matter. And this one, I just want to put this out there. Like some people know that I talk about playlists a lot. It's still a buzzword, uh, but I just want to be clear. A playlist is not your entire marketing plan. Getting on a playlist is great. It's a great look, absolutely. There's things that we'll talk about that can lead to getting on editorial playlists, editorial stations, but by no means am I saying the world is playlists. And I always like to put this one in towards the start. Um, basically, for anyone that's ever thought about buying their way onto a playlist or buying streams, this is what some of those playlists can look like. Very misleading, very confusing. Like, I don't remember Notorious B.I.G. being in the Moana soundtrack. So um, we can definitely get into why payola, playola for some people is such a bad thing, but I just wanted to put that out there at the start. Uh, I'm definitely not talking about anything relating to buying streams or buying placements. Just avoid at all costs. And last thing, uh, my handle on all socials is at Ask Mike Warner. I don't have a camera crew here today. I don't have anyone filming. So if at any point you take any pictures or video and you're like, that actually looks pretty good. Like, I'd love it if you would share it with me. Um, you know, I'm, I can turn on airdrop at the end of this or just tag me on socials like, so I can shout you out and say thank you as well. All right, let's get moving. So this is a survey I did when I spoke at Indie Week a few years ago. And this is what kind of prompted me to start doing this presentation. I just realized my phone has been taking notes for every word I just said, okay. <laughs> so um, this was a survey of attendees, just like, hey, which of these DSPs have you heard of? DSPs being the streaming platforms and which ones do you know have opportunities for artists where they can pitch their music? So I'm gonna go through a lot of platforms you may be familiar with but I'm trying to challenge myself to also show some that you may not be as familiar with. Um, and most of this is definitely artist focused. So if it feels like I'm talking to an artist, it's because that's who I speak to most of the time. I know that we also have teams in here, music marketing teams, A&Rs. Actually, real quick, just survey of the room. Who here is an artist? Holy shit. Okay, <laughs> most of the room. Um, who here works in music? or works with artists. Okay, we got a pretty good, pretty good turnout here, pretty good split. 
And who here is in the wrong room and is too embarrassed to leave? <laughs> okay, we're good. Awesome. Cool. Let's jump in. So Amazon Music, uh, I'm not going to do this every time, but has everyone heard of Amazon Music before? Okay, cool. I'm going to highlight the first thing, which is Amazon Music for Artists. You sign up at artists.amazon.com. Once again, all of this will be in the notes, but feel free to tap away as well. Um, that's where you sign up, you get access, you claim your artists. I'm going to mention artist profiles a lot in this presentation. Um, I feel it's something that's really important because on each of these platforms, people listen where they want to listen. You know, not everyone listens on Spotify, not everyone listens to music on Amazon Music. So what you're doing is you're creating a home that is welcoming fans, new fans, returning fans, people that have just discovered you for the first time, and you're saying, I'm here as well. Check my music out. This is a place where you can hear my music. So getting into Amazon Music for Artists, once you claim your profile and you get access, one feature is they have an integration with Twitch. So who here has a Twitch channel or has gone live on Twitch? Okay. We've got a few? Cool. So um, by connecting your Twitch channel to Amazon, your Amazon Music Artist profile in Amazon Music for Artists, you can go live in both apps at the same time. So an example of what that looks like is on the screen here, I don't have Twitch on my phone, uh, but I have the Amazon Music app. I got a notification that Disclosure was going live. And I also saw it in the home screen of the Amazon Music app, which is another thing that's worth mentioning here is these actually show up in the home screen in the Amazon Music app. Um, so because I'm following the artists, which is an important thing to add, I'll get notifications when they go live. So I was actually able to capture this live stream where they were breaking down a track that they'd made. The next feature with Amazon Music is Hype Deck. So I kind of stole their video here just to run that in the background, but essentially you can create these custom hype cards where you can actually customize the color, the size, and these are ready for you to post on social media. So this could be something like your song was added to a playlist or you released new music or even a podcast episode. The cool thing about this is that it's already created for you. It's on brand for Amazon. Uh, they love to see it. And what I've actually seen some artists do is grab their hype card, share it on social media, tag Amazon Music for Artists. And as a result, Amazon Music for Artists actually followed them and shared that post as well. So you're reaching their audience too. So it's not a guarantee that that's going to happen, but it, you're not going to, you're going to miss that if you don't take that chance and share that. And that's just a quick breakdown of what the steps are for creating a hype card on Amazon. And just here's some examples of hype cards as well, just to show you what they look like. And this next one is merch pages on Amazon.com. So the way that this works is you can, you can either sell your own merch through your Amazon Music Artist profile, or you can go to merch.amazon.com, sign up, upload your artwork yourself, choose what items you would like it printed on, and they can handle printing and shipping on demand, so they can basically handle all of those orders for you. The cool thing about this is that you can then integrate that into your Amazon Music Artist profile, so when people are listening to your music, it's likely if they're listening on Amazon Music, they may have a Prime account, they can tap and order that merch. It can be printed and in some cases I've seen it ship within two days, sometimes next day. Um, and of course that way you don't have to stockpile it in your house as well. So another one that I wanted to highlight there. How's the quality on there? Print on demand. I wish I had one with me because I actually ordered a few um, as tests. I'll see if I can find a photo after, but I found the print quality was really clear. Um, they definitely encourage to do a test order first and they will tell you if the artwork is not high enough resolution or if it looks pixelated, which was helpful because I actually had one, 
I uploaded the logo and it was actually really pixelated. So they knocked it back and told me to redo it. So, but yeah, I wouldn't go making a big announcement until you test one yourself as well, because sometimes it is trial and error. Like they show where it's going to be. So you don't sort of have a logo, you know, on the bottom of your shirt or anything like that. But um, yeah, I found the quality to be good and comparable with others as well. Um, so the, this, I'm not going to walk through step by step, but this is just for anyone that's not aware, you can pitch upcoming releases to Amazon music for editorial consideration. The reason I don't say playlists in this case is because yes, you can be considered to be placed on an editorial playlist, but this can also help with additional programming. A lot of people on Amazon Music can listen to a station. They could be listening to a playlist. The music finishes and similar music keeps playing. By filling these forms out, you are opening it up for those opportunities as well. So to be heard by people that haven't heard you before outside of a playlist through these stations, endless listening modes, if you will. The other thing about this is by following this process, every single person that follows you is going to get a push notification when that release comes out. So however many followers you have on Amazon Music, that push notification will go to their mobile device, it will go to their Alexa device if they have one in their house. And in some cases, that's the first device or first voice they hear in the morning. So um, definitely worth filling out these forms because as you can see, you're adding genres, you're adding additional information about that music, which is helping it to reach the right listeners within Amazon Music. Yes? Uh, just a point of clarification, you, you'd be able to do this even if you're using an aggregator like TuneCore or CD Baby? Definitely. And to your point, TuneCore and CD Baby, when you go to claim access to Amazon Music for artists, they will have an option, log in with your distributor. I highly recommend that because it's the quickest way to verify that you are in fact that artist because you're logging in and saying, I uploaded my music, in your case, DistroKid or TuneCore, log in and you know it's better than having to add your social media and do a post to verify that you are who you say you are. Uh, but yes, definitely, every this is access for everyone. This is not just people that are with a specific distributor or a specific label. This is any artist that has music on Amazon Music. Cool. And then this is just an example of, you know, when people tap follow, they're now following the artists, notifications will show up in the app and on smart devices such as Alexa devices. And spotlights, uh, these are personal voice messages that the artist can record and these will show at the top of the Amazon Music Artist profile. So it's a really cool way to announce a new song, to share some news, to share maybe a quick story about the making of that song. Uh, what I think is a really cool feature that I love to see more artists doing is fans can actually request to hear that spotlight from their Alexa device. So they can say, Alexa, play the Mike, play the Mike Warner spotlight and um, you'll get to hear that spotlight from the artist directly through your Alexa device as well. And just to show you the process, very simple. You know, you could use it to highlight an album playlist or station. You can add a little context. You can add an image and you can set it and it goes live. Obviously, there's a short verification process uh, as with most things. But yeah, it's a, it's a really cool feature. And actually, one thing I should mention on that is that in the Amazon Music for Artists app, they will show you how many voice requests are being made by fans. Um, how many of those fans are requesting by saying the artist's name, by saying a song title from that artist, an album title, or even speaking or singing part of the lyrics to find that artist. So they're definitely taking that into consideration. So by encouraging your fans to request using their voice to hear that spotlight, it's a good look for sure. And it's a fun experience for fans. It's easy to give them a short phrase to say, as opposed to saying, go to Amazon Music, type my name in here, go to my profile, go to the top and click play to hear the spotlight. It's um, a much more fun process. 
Uh, this is the playlist side. Um, Amazon recently launched what they refer to as community playlists. Now, what I like about these is that finally any of us that have an Amazon Music account can go in and create playlists, make them public and share them. I know some people have had hesitation doing this before because they felt they were hard to find or they weren't very discoverable. But what they've started doing now is if you have a Amazon Music account here in the United States, for example, it will show your public community playlist to everyone in the United States. Uh, it won't show it in the search feed to people in other countries, but you can still give them a link and they can click directly through to your playlist in Amazon Music. So the reason why I like this is these playlists you're in control of. You choose what music goes in them. You choose if you want them to be public, you're in control. Um, and so to the point of that, I always encourage artists, um, actually quick survey of the artists in the room, put your hand up if you've created a playlist of your own music that you've shared publicly. Okay, okay. So I think there's a few that haven't yet. So um, the reason why I encourage artists to do that is for me as a fan, as a listener, the first time I hear a new artist, I go directly to their profile. I have too many music streaming apps, so I won't tell you which one I listen to in the morning versus the evening. But the first thing I do is I go to the artist profile and then I look around. Now, if I see a playlist that the artist has curated themselves, then I will go directly to that and I will start listening. Um, and the, the reason why I like to do that is the artist is in control of what songs are in that playlist, the order of those songs. So they're putting their best songs first and they're, t they're showing me what they want to show me. Um, those playlists are incredibly valuable. Um, and then secondly, I would say for artists to create a playlist that includes your music, and similar music from similar artists. Um, and we can definitely get into why that's so important later, but I just wanted to highlight those as well. Definitely creating a playlist of your own music is key. Okay, Angami, forgive my pronunciation with my accent, but who here has heard of Angami? Okay, cool. They do exist here in the United States, but due to licensing reasons, a lot of music won't show as available in the app here. And I've seen a lot of artists that have looked at that and said, oh, I can't find my music in Angami. Why would I pay attention to it? But the reality is, um, and the way that I tested this is, I have a friend that lives in Dubai. And I said, would you mind just opening up Angami, searching for this artist? and telling me if you see them and if you can play their music. And surely enough, he could. So, um, and then the tools that they provide are available to artists worldwide. So uh, this is gonna become, oh, sorry, you got a question there? Yeah, sorry, so where, um, what are the countries that are the most using Angami? Primarily in the Middle East. Middle East, okay. Yep. But they are starting to roll out in other countries yeah, as well, of course. Yes, yes. So yeah, my friend went in and said, your music is in there, I can stream it. And so I realized I need to pay attention. I need to do what I tell everyone else that they should be doing as well. So um, for signing up and getting access, once again, you can get access even if you can't stream your music in the app. And this is going to become more common as I show some other platforms here today. But creators.angami.com is where you get in and you claim your access. Um, just to give you a look at the dashboard, pretty straightforward, pretty familiar to the other offerings that are out there. Uh, but they do allow you to pitch for editorial consideration as well. So fun fact, actually, when I first found out about Angami, I sent a direct message on Twitter or X um, currently. But I sent a direct message and that was actually how I was able to pitch a song. And they actually wrote back a few days later and told me that they placed the song and even sent me a link to the playlist. So they were doing it very manually, um, which is something to keep in mind when a platform is newer, especially when it's moving into new countries, they're very responsive. Like an artist is in, 
interested in their platform, they want to get back to you. They want to hear from you. So um, now they have more of a formal pitching process, which let me jump through here to show you. So, you know, as you can see, the pitch form is very straightforward. You choose a release. I think they give you six releases per year at the moment. And I have found that I've been able to pitch music that is already has already been released as well. Um, but one interesting thing about this pitch form is that they will ask you where would this best fit, um, as in what playlist would this best fit on. Um, and they do actually send a confirmation if they decide to place the music as well. So, you know, it's one of those ones that it takes five minutes to sign up, wait a couple of days to get access, pitch your music, and you may find that you're now getting plays on Angami as well. So we're going to jump into Apple Music, and um, I'm going to assume that most of us here are familiar with Apple and Apple Music. So, um, Apple Music for artists. Uh, you could sign up at artists.apple.com, and we're going to jump past a couple of these. So Apple Music for artists. Some of the more recent updates I wanted to highlight is uh, you can claim your artist profile, of course, but you can add additional details such as date of birth, biography. There's even um, a really cool Q&A section where if you don't know what to write for a biography yet, there's prompts so you can actually answer those questions and have something showing on your profile. I really like this because it's like, hey, you, know, you don't know what to say about yourself yet. What's your favorite song or that you wrote personally or what's a song that inspires you? Um, it's also really cool because um, I geek out on liner notes and they've started to go as far as you can list all band members who played a certain instrument and things like that. Um, so you can update all of that now in Apple Music for artists. Now this next one, this is an example of Apple Motion. So as you can see here, it's, um, we've got the cover image and we've just got some simple movement that is happening in the top there. Um, obviously this is far more appealing and is a way to encourage people to stare at their device for a few more seconds, which means they're going to listen for longer as well. Uh, so to give you another example of what Apple Motion looks like here in the mobile app or for an album cover also, um, as you can see, it's not a movie as such, it's not a short film, it's just some simple movement uh, as opposed to just a static image. But right now, Apple don't have a way to deliver this directly in Apple Music for Artists. So what they've been doing is whoever you're distributing your music through, ask them if you're able to deliver Apple Motion. And if, if they deliver it, they'll give you the specs. Um, but I found a few distributors that have been able to do it so far and it's really effective. Um, I think it's just another way to sort of, I don't know, make, make things a little bit more interesting for your fans as well. Um, I've seen some really fun examples. Like I don't know if anyone here is a fan of Kate Renata, but um, on his Apple Music profile, it's actually got him like walking along the top of his profile and like leaning in and like looking at you and showing off his, ki showing off his kicks and stuff. And it's... Um, it's really fun. Like I saw that and it was just inspiring. You know, you can show a bit of your personality in it. Um, so moving on to the next slide, these are Apple music milestones. So similar to what we saw earlier, these are shareable images that are created for you where you can highlight things such as a new release, a playlist ad, a large amount of Shazams in a specific city, a new chart position on iTunes. There's a lot of different things that you can highlight here. Or you can just simply say, hey, I'm an artist and my music's on Apple Music because that's an achievement in itself. Uh, but let's look at how these work. So as you can see here on the screen, there's a number of ways you can customize the color, the size. Uh, they can email these assets to you or you could just download them directly. If you're using the Apple Music for Artists app on your phone, you can share these directly from that app to platforms such as Instagram, and it will even copy the link across for you. 
I've just got an example in the Apple Music for Artists app, just choosing to share one of these and just what that looks like exactly. So as you can see, you scroll down in the home screen and then it's got milestones there highlighted for you. You tap share and I realize that that screen recording might be slightly out of date now, but um, yeah. And then the next one is collaborative playlists. Wow, I said it properly for once. It's a tongue twister. Um, this, I actually tested this. I mean, I test everything before I talk about it, but um, I had a private playlist of uh, animal cameos in music videos. So think like Outkast, Miss Jackson. Um, and I made it public. And when this new feature went live, I shared it and as you can see here on the left hand side, it has an option towards the top corner when you're looking at a playlist you created in the Apple Music app. And then once you tap on that icon, you can invite people to join. Now I would highly recommend if you're sharing this publicly, turn on that toggle that says approve collaborators. Otherwise, anyone can go in there and add tracks and it's going to get wild. Um, I did that. I have about five people that saw when I posted it and requested to be added and I added them and they've actually added some cool suggestions in there. So it's more of a fun kind of feature at the moment. Uh, but, you know, I do kind of see the possibilities here for, say, a band or a group when you've got multiple members to all have access together to collaborate on a playlist that could be discography or catalog. Um, one example for myself with uh, my music project, which is called Date Night, uh, we're in the process of trying to work out the order of tracks or the track list for our next album. So all the tracks we've released already, we have a private for now collaborative playlist where we're all going in there and moving the tracks around to see what we think the track listing is going to look like. Um, so once again, just more of a fun feature right now, uh, but definitely worth playing with. Cool. So this is just a quick look at um, in Apple Music for Artists. If you've ever wondered, did my upcoming release get delivered correctly from my distributor? Is it going to show up on time? Um, I usually give this a few days to a week uh, to be safe before I start panicking, but you'll be able to see those upcoming releases in here. And then you know that on release day, it's gonna go live in Apple Music for all your fans on your profile. Um, another thing that you can do here, actually on this next slide, is you can add lyrics. So um, obviously there's a number of different places you can add lyrics and we're gonna see that here today. Um, and later on, we'll talk about why lyrics are so important for discoverability. Yes. Sorry, I was just curious, uh, is there a day that you found like it's a good like, daytime to like, schedule your release? Because I've heard some different things about like when you want to like, make sure it goes on this day. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've kind of tried all of them, to be honest. And I mean, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not at, you know, a, a top tier level of an artist. So I found that the, the day of the week doesn't necessarily matter. If I release a new track on a Wednesday and it's going to get added to a playlist, it will still get added. Um, and honestly, I feel like Fridays, there's so much competition that, you know, if you release it on another day, there's less people making noise. You know, there's, there isn't a whole new album that just dropped that day that you're competing with from another artist. So yeah, I, I would say any day of the week is fine to be honest. Um, but if that changes, I'll let you know. Uh, yes. About um, the lyrics, I've always wondered, I do electronic music and um, sometimes I have like longer samples in it. And I'm always thinking about not, not when it's the vocals over it, but only a sample. And to think about this is not lyrics for me, but it's a spoken word. Yeah. I never put it in lyrics. Uh, what's your opinion on this? I. So, okay, so the spoken word section in a song, not putting it in the lyrics. I mean, personally, I would put it in. Um, and the other reason I would say that is discoverability, because, 
you know, as we know with social media, some of the most viral parts of songs are actually the talk before the drop, in your case with electronic dance music, or, um, you know, even other genres. So people are searching for those words that are spoken in that song. Like, you want to talk, you want to talk an example, Lizzo, I just took a DNA test. Like, whether you would say it's spoken or whether she was singing at that point, like, imagine if that wasn't discoverable because that wasn't included in the lyrics. So, um, and the other thing with lyrics as well is this feature here is Apple Music Sing, which is slowly rolling out. Uh, it may be a little hard to see in this example, but on top of that television is uh, somebody is using their phone and they're using continuity camera, which is a feature in Apple where basically your phone acts as your webcam for your computer or you can FaceTime from your TV and you can use your phone as well so you can have a higher quality video and you can have a FaceTime call on your television. So Apple Music Sing, what's fun is it actually, if you have your phone on your TV pointing at you, it puts you in almost like a music video. So you're now on the screen and you've got the lyrics on the screen and they're synced as well. So they're in real time and you can sing along with them. So by adding lyrics, you're opening up features like this for your fans as well. And in the case of, you know, if they're talking, you know, they can talk along as well. So definitely another reason to include lyrics there. And it's a weird transition. <laughs> I should fix that. Um, Okay, this is something that I really feel is overlooked at the moment. And, you know, I want to point out just how important this is. If you have fans that are listening to you on Apple Music and they favorite you, it looks like a little star icon at the moment. Every artist they favorite, they will get a notification when a future release comes out on Apple Music ongoing. So there's no additional steps other than people that have favorited you, have their notifications turned on, will get a notification for all future releases. But this here is actually my home screen. So when you go to your home screen in Apple Music, the very first page and you scroll down, artists that you favorite can be seen right there. So in, in this case, you can see I've got a very uh, unique blend of music there. Uh, waffle Cakes is definitely my jam uh, as well. Uh, but actually I play waffle cakes for our dog uh, to help her relax at night. Um, it's like piano lullaby music. But, um, but yeah, like by simply asking fans, hey, if you listen to me on Apple Music, favorite me. That way you won't miss a release and I'll be right there on your home screen when you're wondering what music you would like to listen to. And, you know, to encourage people to do that, uh, we can also use these share cards once again from the Apple Music for Artists app. So this one here, it says become a fan favorite. Um, and you can see it's already created the card for you. And then you can tap through, share that directly to social media. And you can also copy the link as well. So people that follow that link will go directly to your profile. They still need to click favorite, of course. It won't do that for them. Uh, but it does make it much quicker. So next up we have Bandcamp. I know there's been a lot of talk about Bandcamp recently, um, but there's a couple of features that I wanted to highlight. Um, this is a new feature. This is more as a fan, but I, I think it does benefit both fan and artist. They have a new tab called Discover. And so this allows you to filter by genre, but also location of the artists. So I live in San Diego. I was able to go in and find artists that make music that are local. So I was able to discover new artists as a result. Um, and you can also go in here. Some people like to buy vinyl. Some people like to buy cassette tapes, T-shirts. You can filter by what they have available through Bandcamp as well. So definitely a good feature there for fans, but also for the artists to be discovered by those fans. And this is Bandcamp Daily. So this is where they write detailed reviews about albums. Um, they actually ask for the longest amount of lead time from an artist or 
from a band um, for them to be able to review your album prior to release. So Bandcamp Daily, they ask for, I think it's up there. Nope, doesn't say. Uh, it was about 10 weeks. Like you have an album coming out in less than 10 weeks, we probably won't get to it. Um, but the reason for that is they want time to listen. They want time to pass it around, show it to other people, write a review about it, or uh, and then um, share that on Bandcamp Daily. Yes. I mean, they also have to commission it and pay somebody to do it, so they need to allocate their budget. Of course. Narrowly. Yeah, okay. definitely. But the cool thing about it is, of course, if it does go ahead, you have someone that's written words about your music that you can use in other things as well, as far as sharing on socials. Yes. Do you do it for pre-existing albums or just prior to the movie? Prior to release is all I've seen right now, yeah. I mean, look, if there was a big anniversary edition that came out, maybe, yeah. But from what I've seen, it's just something that hasn't come out yet because they, you know, like most blogs, um, they want to hear it first and they want to be able to write about it before it comes out. And then this is a fun one. Uh, Bandcamp Friday is a day where they basically take no fees and artists get the entire payment. So you pay $10, the artist gets $10 that day. Um, Bandcamp Friday has become so popular that there's a separate website called isitbandcampfriday.com, which has a live countdown to the next Bandcamp Friday. What's fun with this is I've seen some artists actually use this and schedule a social media post in advance to come out right on Bandcamp Friday with a link to their artist profile in Bandcamp or their latest release. So they're breaking the news and saying it's Bandcamp Friday, uh, but they're also highlighting their music at the same time. So is it Bandcamp Friday is where you can find that out, obviously. Um, the next one is <laughs> not in the past, but just for the example. Um, next up is Deezer. Who here is familiar with Deezer? Okay, cool, cool, awesome. <laughs> so um, with Deezer, first thing is uh, getting in and claiming access, which is creators.deezer.com. And I'm just going to highlight a couple of these features. So they have this, what they call their artist messaging feature. It allows you to post a very short status update, even shorter than most posts on social media. Um, but as you can see, it's up the top of the artist profile. It's not audio. It's simply just text at this time. Some artists have used this to put a promo code for a pre-sale, for a tour, or share details about a release date for an upcoming album or just you know let your fans know that you're working on new music um, and once again this goes back to the point I made earlier about being present on these platforms and letting people know that hey if you listen to me on Deezer you know this is a home where you can find me and find my music as well and then there's also a feature here where you can highlight an album or a podcast or a podcast episode um, or many other things at the top of your Deezer profile. Now, the reason I say podcasts or a podcast episode is you may be a guest on someone's podcast talking about your music, your process, your release. Uh, you can actually highlight that specific podcast episode at the top of your Deezer profile as well. Yes. Um, so do they also like host it similar, similarly like Spotify, how they have their own kind of like podcasters or Spotify, like does Deezer have their own that? Like can you actually do podcasts? Yeah. No, that's a good one. So um, like I have a podcast myself and I distribute it to Deezer as well. Um, so anyone that has a podcast has the RSS feed, can add that into Deezer, the same with Pandora, the same with Amazon Music. A number of these platforms have podcasts now. Um, Deezer do have some of their own original content they create, similar to how Spotify have some exclusive podcasts as well. But yeah, if you've got a podcast that you're creating and putting out, it can be available on Deezer for everyone as well. Cool. 
Next up, we're going to go to GeoSarvan. And once again, if I pronounce it incorrectly, feel free to correct me. <laughs> but um, so who here has heard of GeoSarvan? OK, cool. Do you, know, do you know if I pronounced it correctly? Yeah. Nice. What Thank you. Is it it's one of the most popular streaming services in India. India. Yep. And so GeoSarvan has Artist One, which is the artist facing platform. A couple of features on here that I want to highlight, and I should mention it's not on the screen, it is in the notes, but artists.geosarvan.com is where you sign up to get access to these tools. So the first one here is shorties. So these are short visual loops. It may look familiar from some other platforms. Uh, they're up to 15 seconds long. And as you can see, it takes up the entire screen when people are listening to your song in the mobile app. So if you already have a short clip, 15 seconds or less, uh, that works well as a loop, you can upload these and have them in the app. And once again, this helps with longer engagement. If someone is listening to your song, deciding if they want to keep listening, having a visual to keep their attention might get them past that 30 second mark where it counts as a stream and they get paid for that as well. <laughs> And there's two types of playlists you can create on GeoSarvan. Uh, so one is a playlist that is all of your own catalog. It's just music you've released yourself. Uh, and you can see here it's called Artist Hits. And then the next one, I feel like it shouldn't be said, it shouldn't say made by it, but it's basically a playlist you curate where you can include music from any artist you want. So you can highlight other artists in that second playlist. Uh, but the cool thing about this is that they look very official. GeoSarvan handle the artwork creation, the description, the title, so it all stays on brand. They're featured directly at the top of the artist profile as well. So it doesn't link to a separate user profile or anything like that. Um, and you know, once again, it's, it's another place to just welcome fans. I, as you, as you can see here, uh, date night when we signed up, we were absolutely killing it on Geo Seven, and, <laughs> and uh, I was that one follower. But you got to start somewhere. So um, cool. And next up is Music's Match. Now I know they're not a streaming platform as such, but I get a lot of people asking me questions about them. So I just wanted to highlight a few features from Music's Match. Um, who here is familiar with Music's Match? Okay, so basically, I guess the simpler version is they deliver lyrics to a number of different platforms. They deliver synced lyrics as well, so platforms that follow the lyrics in real time. Uh, there's a number of other features that they've started rolling out where they can automatically create lyric videos for you and things like that. Um, so I should say disclaimer, some of these features may be paid features, um, but at the very least you can get in, claim a profile and start updating lyrics if anything looks incorrect. But this is just a quick sort of video while I grab a sip of water just to show you what the platform looks like. Yes. So to get, I, I've seen this with a lot of artists. They have synced lyrics on like Spotify and other stuff. So would this be the platform you'd have to go to to get that done? This is one of them, absolutely. Um, you know, I should say, not Music Match isn't the only one. There are other platforms that deliver lyrics as well. Um, and also, in some cases, depending on the distributor you work with, they may actually deliver the lyrics for you too. But some of the reasons, some of the ways that Music's Match is beneficial as well. Um, obviously, these are pretty straightforward here. Um, you know, we can see in this case, Spotify is one of them to answer your question as well, and Tidal. Uh, and we have the synchronized lyrics there where it follows them in real time. But when we start to dive into other platforms, you know, we start to realize that these synchronized lyrics will show on social media as well so 
Instagram, for example, someone uses the audio, the lyrics have been delivered, those lyrics can show on screen when people post a reels or a story as well. Uh, websites, there's genius.com, there's a number of other websites where people can search for lyrics and find those lyrics for the song. Uh, GeoSarvent makes an appearance here again as well. And where it gets really interesting is Google. So these lyrics can be found in Google and one thing that I thought was really interesting is there's people that have been searching for something, uh, let's say just as an example, someone wanted to write a speech for their wedding and they wrote in a few words and it actually delivered lyrics to a song they'd never heard of in the search results. They connected with that song, it ended up being their wedding dance. You know, there's this is a way that someone could discover your music through the lyrics before they've even heard the song. Uh, and then additionally, you've got Amazon Music and Shazam as well. And as mentioned, I covered Instagram before. Um, and then also smart speakers. So people may talk to their smart speaker in their house and say things you know, such as Alexa, play the song that goes and they'll sing or they'll speak part of the lyrics. I'm not going to sing here today. I'll spare you all. Um, and then, yeah, for the website, it's pro.musicsmatch.com. Um, some, some of the first things I did when I went on there was just made sure I added all the lyrics and I also checked any lyrics that were already added by someone else. It is very community driven. So fans will go on there and upload lyrics if they notice that they haven't been delivered by their favorite artist. Uh, sometimes it's not completely right. So it's, it's worth checking as well. Cool. We are up to Pandora. Okay, who here is familiar with Pandora? Nice, cool. So Pandora only exists in the United States. Um, it has existed in other countries before. When I was still living in Australia, fun fact, I was working in an Apple retail store, back of house, and Apple Music didn't exist. We were listening to Pandora. So um, Pandora has been around a very long time. And one thing that they're known for is like their human curation and the fact that it's still human curation. Um, to give you an idea, when you wanted to get music on Pandora back in the day, you had to mail in a physical CD and they would listen to it. Then if they wanted to add it to the platform, they would go to iTunes, purchase your music, ingest it into Pandora, and then they would tag it with up to 600 different characteristics to make sure that it reached the right listeners in the platform. Like, we're talking over 10 years ago, they were ahead of their time. And so, as of now, Pandora have roughly 60 million monthly listeners or monthly users. And keep in mind that they only exist in the United States. So for a lot of artists that you know, want to have an audience here, I tell them that Pandora is one you need to be paying attention to because as far as platforms here and as far as subscriber numbers, they're in the top five for the United States. Uh, the other thing about Pandora is their artist marketing platform which is AMP for short, is available wherever you are in the world. So anyone can sign up at amp.pandora.com, even if you're not in the United States, meaning you can't listen to Pandora or listen to your music on there. And there's a few features that have just been released from Pandora. Uh, the first one is Spotlight Picks. So this allows you to highlight up to 10 pieces of content. And I hate to say content referring to music, but in this case, it's not just music. Um, you can highlight podcasts, playlists, stations, albums, tracks at the top of the artist profile in Pandora. And you can highlight up to 10 of those for up to 180 days. So you only have to go in and update this twice per year. Um, and then the other thing that you can do is you can also add your profile photo and a cover image that goes behind that as well. 
And so just to give you an idea, once you've added the cover image and you've added some spotlight pics there, what that looks like. <coughs> and once again, they stay live for one, up to 180 days. So you only need to do this twice per year. Um, and you can finally add a bio directly to Pandora now. Um, for anyone that may not be familiar, it's been a very long process uh, prior to this a lot of sending emails and chasing things up because Pandora weren't able to directly add the bios. Um, so now you can upload it directly in here and it will show on your profile once it's been approved. And that's just an example of when you're looking at the artist profile, the spotlights show up the very top. So if, you, if there's something that you wanna highlight for your listeners, make sure you spotlight it and you can put it up the very top of the screen. So, amp.pandora.com is where you sign up to get access. The next thing I wanted to highlight is Pandora have a feature called Featured Tracks. This allows you to feature up to six tracks per year, eight weeks per track. So basically 48 weeks out of the year you can have a song featured on Pandora. They don't take any, there's no difference in the royalties, there's no payment, uh, there's no cost. Uh, so with featured tracks, basically it's, the point of entry is really simple. The song needs to have, the track that you would like to feature needs to have been released within the last 12 months, the last year, and have 10 streams in the last seven days. Um, the reason for that is they need to have an idea of who listened and where they can put it. Because when you feature a track on Pandora, they take that track and they put it into their endless listening modes, which means someone listened to a similar artist, they finished listening, they need to be delivered more music. You can be that music. They listen to a station that finished or a playlist that finished. The music continues to play in Pandora. It doesn't stop unless you tell it to. So you can get delivered there as well. And just to give you an idea, this is an example of an artist that did a featured track. Um, that form is simply choose the track, choose the start date and the end date and submit. There's no yes or no, it's the track qualifies because it's had 10 streams in the last seven days, was released in the last year. It will go live on these dates as a featured track. So this artist here gained an additional 3,752 spins as a result of just clicking a few buttons. The cool thing about this is, as you can see, Pandora keep track of how is this song doing with the audience that we put it in front of. Are we getting a good amount of thumbs up? Are we getting a lot of skips? Um, or is this the audience that this music is looking for and vice versa? Um, definitely, this is the very first thing I tell everyone to do when they sign up for Pandora's artist marketing platform is go in and start featuring music. Because if you released a track six months ago, you can still feature it and you can get it in front of an audience. Uh, another thing that's really cool is let's say you released music around a specific holiday. So for the sake of this, let's say Christmas. Um, you released an album right before Christmas last year. This year, it's still within that one year time frame. You can feature a track from that and put it in front of an audience and give it a second chance. Um, and then this is just track reporting in Pandora. So, you know, a lot of people think it's kind of mysterious, like how many listeners do I have? Where are they from? Um, you know, how many streams am I getting? Am I on any playlists or stations in Pandora? I will say with Pandora, on the editorial side, it's mostly stations now. Because of the way that they've curated for so long, they're able to place a large amount of music from a variety of artists in a station that works and keeps people listening for a long amount of time versus a playlist where it's all in, you know, everyone's listening in the same order for the most part. And these are the updates that Pandora have provided. So once again, if you don't have you, you're not necessarily logging into Pandora's artist marketing platform every day, and I, I wouldn't encourage that with any platform. Um, they can also send you emails. You can get a weekly summary, which I personally like, where it will just tell you, here's how many listeners you had, here's how many streams you had, here's any 
placements you had as far as editorial placements as well. Uh, they also have these cards where they'll highlight milestones as well for you, similar to what we've seen earlier that you can share on social media. Um, and so then these are artist audio messages. So this is a voice message that you can record that will play before or after a specific song on Pandora. What's really helpful about this is if you look sort of down there, there's a section that says localize it. You can choose for this to only play in specific locations. So if you have an upcoming show in New York, you can have it so it only plays to people in New York State or New York City um, and doesn't play to people in California that won't be coming to that show. And you can create multiples of these as well. And you can also include a link that can link off platform from Pandora. So obviously you can't link to another streaming platform, uh, but you can link to say where people can purchase merchandise or tickets directly from that. So while they're listening to Pandora, they'll hear you, the artist, talking to them. And on the screen, they'll see an option that says tap here or buy merch and they'll be able to follow through directly to that link and hear that news that you would like to share with them as well. Uh, so with Pandora, I get a lot of people that say, hey, how am I meant to get the 10 streams in the last seven days so that I can feature <coughs> tracks? Um, obviously, someone could, I, if they wanted to, go in there and play that song 10 times, but one thing that the Pandora team have done as a way to help with this is they created their own station called Fresh Cuts. And to be considered for your song to be added to Fresh Cuts, you simply tag Pandora's artist marketing platform account on social media. Mostly Instagram is where they're most active, but I've seen a large amount of artists doing this sharing the song of course this is after the song is out so the, so the song is now out in the world you grab that pandora link you post it on social media you tag the pandora amp account and it may end up in their fresh cut station now it's not going to deliver you know a life-changing amount of streams but it is delivering enough for most artists that they're able to then feature those tracks in the future as well so, um, and not only that, but it's a fun station for discovery and they have a way that it will personalize itself for the end listener. So if you like rock, it's not going to serve you completely different genres in that station. They're trying to make it something that, you know, is personalized to the end listener as well. Yes. What's the account? Just add Pandora. Yeah, it's. It's a, it's a funny one because it's amp underscore, and thank you for pointing that out, it's amp underscore Pandora on Instagram, and it's at Pandora amp on Twitter, or, or X. Um, you know, I really wish they'd get the one handle, uh, but, <laughs> you know. Cool. Um, so SoundCloud, we're up to S. We are moving. Uh, so SoundCloud for Artists went under sort of a rebrand and they've slowly been rolling out some new features. Um, but artists.soundcloud.com is where you log in. The dashboard. Um, so I'm just going to do a couple of quick fire things here. But the first one is SoundCloud Radio. So they have a station on Sirius XM. And this is an opportunity. Who here is releasing hip hop? Okay, cool. Awesome. So SoundCloud Radio only play hip hop and through SoundCloud for Artists, there is an opportunity to submit releases for consideration on SoundCloud Radio on Sirius XM. And there's also a few other features in there as well. Uh, one of them is Beat Source. There's also Beatport. A number of these the way that they work is they will put your music in front of various DJs. So if you have extended mixes or mixes with a longer intro, longer outro, um, you can put them onto these platforms as well. So DJs can access them and perform with them as well. Spotify. Do I even need to ask? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spotify's getting some cheers. Uh, we don't have any Spotify staff in here, do we? 
Spotify team members. I'm just kidding. Um, so if you haven't already, uh, artists.spotify.com. A couple of features that have been added recently. The first one is they have, up until recently, they had an integration with Songkick, uh, but they're now integrating with bands in town for concert and event listings. Uh, you can still add these details and make the connection in Spotify for Artists. But just worth mentioning that if you're noticing some concerts, some shows aren't necessarily showing on the profile, that could be why, because this only happened recently. Um, but what's cool is they also have the events tab that you can see on the right hand side there so that when fans go to an artist profile, they can see where the artist is performing as well. Now this next one, this is a separate website, but this was created by Spotify. Uh, the website is spotifycodes.com, C-O-D-E-S. Uh, this allows you to create a code that anyone that has the Spotify app on their phone, next to the search bar, there'll be a little icon they can tap on and point it directly at that code. This will take them directly to an artist, podcast, podcast episode, playlist, album, audiobook. You get the idea, almost anything in Spotify. So it's taking them directly to there as opposed to just to a profile. Um, and this example on the right hand side, my friend Eddie actually showed up one day and had a Spotify code on his hat. And to my surprise, it actually worked. So I was like, okay, I've got I've to share that. You all um, see tattoos, right? Sometimes. It's kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's scary, man. Like, I, I've seen people tattoo a QR code, and I'm like, what if the link changes? Like, <laughs> crazy. In museums, too. Yeah. You have a playlist for it. Definitely. Exactly. And I do get the question, is it really that much different to a QR code? And I say, well, not really. But if someone has the Spotify app, it's less, less clicks, takes less time. Um, and then this is just an example of Spotify, Spotify code in the wild. Um, spotted here during South by Southwest. You won't be able to unsee these now. And if anyone has a Spotify app on their phone, and wants to try it, you're more than welcome. But I will save you pointing and testing uh, and just let you know it's a shameless plug. My audio book is on Spotify. So it will take you directly to that. I think I saw you tried it. Cool. All right, see, I had to get a shameless plug in at some point, so. Cool. I'm gonna jump to the next slide now. Um, and this one, this is a separate website again, created by Spotify. Um, it is in the notes, but it's promocards.bybyspotify.com. And so these cards are shareable assets that you can share on social media, customize the color. You can highlight that you're an artist and your music is available on Spotify. You can also highlight milestones such as how many followers you have now, a new release, or on the next screen here, even highlighting an upcoming show or concert as well. Once again, that integration with bands in town and Spotify. Uh, an interesting use that I've seen with Spotify is artists actually selling MP3 files on their, on their profiles because of the Shopify integration with Spotify which is a tongue twister. Uh, so in this case, we saw Beyonce, Break My Soul. As soon as the song was released, you could also go and purchase the MP3 file directly from her profile. And it was right there highlighted in the offers section. Um, and so, you know, I've seen other examples. I've seen Taylor Swift selling cassette tapes. I've seen other artists selling vinyl on there, um, anything, within reason that you're sharing on Shopify, you can also bring that across to your artist profile in Spotify as well. And this one I just wanted to end on for Spotify um, because some people aren't aware of this, but Spotify have studios that you can actually book out and use and there's no cost. And if that changes, I'll let you know. But 
Um, they have studios currently in London, Los Angeles, Nashville, Toronto, and there's one coming soon to Atlanta. Uh, the website has also changed for this, as you can see there, up there, it's songwritingstudios.byspotify.com. Um, they are popular, but you know, if you're planning ahead and you've got a trip, like I, some artists have used this to go in and you know, record some vocals. Some artists have gone in there to get some cool content for their social media. Uh, some people have used them to record a podcast episode or an interview. So, um, you know, if you're traveling and you're looking for a studio to use, definitely worth giving them a shot as well. Next up, we're up to Tidal. Uh, is everyone here familiar with Tidal? Okay, cool. So a few features on Tidal that I wanted to highlight. The first one is, now this is only for paid subscribers at this time there is talks of a way to be able to offer this for free. Um, but basically on the home screen, you'll see live sessions. These are people with a title subscription that are going live directly in the app. Now what that means is they're playing music. They're not talking. There's no other way of interacting with them apart from some emojis. But when you go live, on Tidal, anyone can join that session and listen along with you in real time. For an artist, that's really cool because let's say you told your fans, I'm going live on Tidal at 1 p.m. this Friday, I'm gonna play through some of my catalog and I'm gonna play my new album, listen with me. You can see in real time in the top right corner, it will show you how many people are listening at that same time. So if you have, let's say you have 100 people listening while you're live on Tidal, that's 100 unique listeners. That's 100 streams of that track that's playing at that time. So for me, I've seen artists do this, go live and realize, wow, you know, I'm, I had 100 people streaming my new song at the same time on Tidal at that moment. Um, and then just to show you what it looks like, basically when you're listening to music, you would tap the live icon in the top right corner. This only works on your phone and only if you have a paid subscription at this time. You can name the session, whatever you choose. Um, I've found emojis work pretty well <laughs> for capturing people's attention, love them or hate them. And then when you go live, you can see in the example here, there are three people listening at that time when I went live. Yes. Uh, so when you say it's only for premium users, is that for people in the app trying to listen with you or do you, as an artist do you have to have a premium? So to go live you need a premium. Okay. For people to listen without interruption they need premium. But Tidal is rolling out a feature where when you go live you can share the link. Fans that don't have Tidal yet will hear an ad, then listen to your live stream. And then of course, they'll have a message on the screen saying consider subscribing. Um, so there will be a way that people that aren't premium subscribers can listen to that live stream in the future. Cool. Uh, and then Tidal have Tidal Artists Home, which is you know, also known as Tidal for Artists. A um, few features that they've added. The first one is you can add a photo. You can also add a biography. You can link your social media accounts, which I think is incredibly valuable because when I hear an artist for the first time, apart from all the other things I said I do, if I like their music, I go and follow them on social media. So by having these links here, you can make sure that they're following you on other platforms as well. Um, so as you can see, you've got options there for TikTok, Instagram, even your website as well. And then this section on the bottom, uh, report inappropriate, uh, report inaccurate content. Uh, you know, a number of artists are seeing that maybe there's a song that's on their profile that belongs to someone else. Um, you can actually update that directly in here and put in those requests now instead of wondering, how can I correct this? Another thing with Tidal is that they really wanna highlight everyone that works in music. So not just the artists, but also the songwriters, the engineers, like everyone that plays their part in making music and giving them their own profile. So moving forward, there'll be ways that all of them can be highlighted on an album, on a single as well. And just to show you what it looks like on a profile that's been updated, 
and then we're gonna jump in here. Now I don't have a lot on TikTok. I'm just gonna share one thing, which is for anyone that's curious how they're doing on TikTok from their profile. Uh, when you're logged into TikTok.com on your computer in your web browser, you go to TikTok.com slash analytics. Um, it can show you things such as how much engagement you've had on recent posts, uh, live streams and things like that. Um, I could definitely do a whole session on TikTok, but I feel like, um, you know, we've, there's only enough hours. But uh, so now what I'm gonna do is just jump to some different apps and quick things that I found helpful and interesting. Um, and we'll go from there. So, some different apps. This first one is called OneSheet, uh, or OneSheet.club is the website. They were acquired by Chartmetric. Um, full disclosure, I worked for Chartmetric for about five years. I finished up there in 2022. Um, but they, this was right around the time that they were working on the acquisition. <coughs> but essentially, OneSheet allows you to have a live one sheet that updates every day with the latest data. So for people that have a one sheet that says, how many followers you have on Instagram, how many monthly listens you have on Spotify, all of these numbers, love them or hate them, like these numbers will be there and updated every day. Uh, it will also pull in things like your latest bio from different streaming platforms. So if you update your bio on Spotify, it can pull it from there. It can highlight new music videos that you've uploaded to your YouTube channel. It's instead of just a PDF document, it's more interactive. And it, for the most part, it updates as much as it can automatically every day. The next one is Playlist AI. This is more just a fun tool for creating playlists. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier the importance of creating a playlist of your own music, but also if you're open to it, creating an additional playlist of music from similar artists. This is a good way to do that very quickly. Um, you can actually type in a prompt and it will spit out a playlist for you that you can then save to Spotify or Apple Music or a number of other platforms they're opening it up to. One feature that I really enjoyed playing with on here was you can upload an image of a festival lineup, let's say Coachella, and it will create a playlist based on all the artist names that it picks from that lineup for you. So. Um, you know, and even if it's a discography playlist, you could just say, create a playlist of all the music released by this artist, including remixes that they appear on. And it will do that for you in seconds. Um, but yeah, that is Playlist AI. And the website is playlistai.app. I'm sorry if you're trying to scan the QR code, I'll give you a few seconds. <laughs> Are these apps cool. free? Yeah, so Playlist AI is free. There is obviously a paid version as well, um, but there is the free version which I've used, which is more than enough just to get in there and have some fun. Uh, the next one is Super Friday Chart. So what this does is, it, for anyone that doesn't know, on Spotify, there's a number of New Music Fridays for various countries around the world. You know, it's over 150 different New Music Fridays. And you know, I used to geek out and bookmark them all and, and check them um, to see you know, what's showing up in various parts of the world. What this does is it takes all of those New Music Fridays and it looks at how many times a song appeared in how many New Music Fridays around the world. So you know, if you're ever wondering what song is you know, trending in, or is appearing in the most New Music Fridays, you can go to this chart and look. And this is free. Um, and you can even get it emailed to you directly on a Friday as well if, if you like geeking out on that and you don't wanna miss any new music. This next one um, sounds dangerous, but uh, essentially what this is doing is it is just looking at Spotify playlists and it is looking at the public information in Spotify. So it is saying this playlist appears to be well curated. This playlist has had a steady growth of followers. This playlist has songs in here where this playlist is generating a significant amount of listeners for that playlist. Um, they go into the detail on how they break it down on their website, but 
you know, I just found it to be a helpful tool just to see, you know, to answer the question, is it a good playlist? Um, it's not 100% accurate, but it has been helpful. Whoops. Is, is that the name of the tool? Oh, that the yeah. Sorry, I triple clicked here. Um, yeah, so the website is isitagoodplaylist.com. Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, now this one, there is a free version which I use to record this and there is a paid version which gives you full 4K. Uh, you can even control the camera in some instances, but this is earthcam.com. So what's fun about this is like, let's say an artist is on a billboard in Times Square and can't be there and wants to watch it in real time. Um, these cameras live stream 24 hours a day around the world and there's multiple cameras set up in different places. It sounds kind of freaky now that I think about it. But, um, you know, so this has been incredibly helpful. There was actually a time where there was an artist that was like, I can't be there, but I want to see the new music Friday with my name. Um, so you can actually do that. And once again, this is free. Um, or you can pay if you want full 4K high quality and you want to be able to save it offline and you want to bookmark cameras and things like that and even go back in time. Um, it's pretty wild. You can go, go to Times Square when the pandemic kicked in and it's empty. Um, it's really weird to watch. But that's what I do with my time. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do some shameless plugs. Um, for anyone that doesn't know I wrote a book called work hard playlist hard that is out around the world it's a paperback audiobook and ebook um, for anyone that speaks Spanish there's also my good friend Erica Parr did a complete rewrite of the book in Spanish as well so it's not just a word-for-word -word translation she completely rewrote it uh, did all new screenshots and made sure it made sense so um, and then the last one is, I mean, you can reach out to me on any social media platform. And I mean, if you want my email address, it's really hard to guess. It's mike at askmikewarner.com. But um, I made this fun tool that is, for the sake of this, we're just calling it Mike GPT. But basically what it does is if you want to ask a question and you can't reach me directly, you can try this out and it scans all of my YouTube videos that I've posted, all of, the, all of my podcast transcripts as well, uh, my book, and pretty much everything that I've put out online. And it does its best to answer those questions for you. And it even shows like where that information came from. So like, oh, this was from this part of the book or this was from this YouTube video. So it's not perfect, um, but it's, it's fun to try. Okay, last shameless plug. Um, for anyone that has a LinkedIn premium account or wants to do a free trial on LinkedIn Learning, I have a course on there. It takes about one hour to, clear, to complete and it covers a lot of the things that I spoke on today. But the cool thing about it is once you complete it, you actually get a certification that shows up directly in your LinkedIn profile as well. And you get a certificate of completion to prove that you know you invested that time so, but yeah thank you everyone for your time I appreciate you have a great day I, I took pictures of you oh thank you